as we continue our coverage of the events of Hurricane Helene and particularly the aftermath of Hurricane Helene, uh, we are pleased to be joined by Representative Jeremy Faison, who's doing great work uh, for his district and for the entire region of the people of the eastern Tennessee uh, region that was affected so greatly by this storm. And he joins us via cell phone today uh, to talk about the continued efforts. Uh, Representative, thank you so much for being on with us. Good afternoon. Thank you, brother. Thank you for having me. Honored to be with you. Well, just give us, um, you know, I know you and I have not had an opportunity to speak. I know you're working with uh, state officials. You're working with anybody that's going to help you in that region of the world, trying to get relief to your constituents. You're on the ground. Uh, just tell us what you're seeing and, and what you have experienced, Jeremy. So I'll tell you this. There were, there were countless tragedies that took place over a 24-hour period that, wreaked havoc in people's lives, people's properties. Um, it, it was devastating. But I will tell you this, the love that's poured in afterwards has been greater than that hurricane and that storm that happened. It, it has been an absolute beautiful thing to watch. My people are still hurting. had a town hall last night. I got to talk with some of my co- my friends that have lost everything. A little lady walked up to me started crying she said jeremy you can't even see where my house used to be um total devastation for some Mm. people but i'll say this tennessee has showed up people from all around america have showed up and and i've seen sometimes when you're in politics it's harder to find the goodness of humanity man i've seen the goodness of humanity and uh of course i've seen some of the ugly of humanity too through this but uh i it's been rough being without water for eight days is one of the most trying things you've ever done at your house you know i I could not i started crying when i woke up and we had a little bit of water coming through our (laughs) sink and i could actually flush the toilet or turn on the water it it brought tears to my eyes i bet uh i'll send you a picture brian i literally had a, 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 a an ice chest filled up with water beside my commode and a pot that I would dip the water out of the ice chest and put it in the back of the commode so we could flush. <laughs> I, it just little things like that. You know, you, you don't realize that. But here's the deal. I had a house. I had a commode that I could actually do that. I have constituents that don't have that now. So uh, it, it, it's it, here's what I learned. We never, nobody ever in East Tennessee has ever experienced anything like this. Mm. So it's almost like we're navigating. If you live in a low-line area, You've experienced flood before. If you live around Florida, even in Nashville, y'all have experienced flood. You, you knew the river could flood. But up in, these, up in the mountains, nobody had a clue. We're talking things way past the 100-year flood plain got wiped out. Houses are gone that were sitting way above a 100-year flood plain that never anybody ever thought in a million years could be hit. They were hit. So we're navigating water, for, no pun intended, that we've never navigated before. What um, there, there have been a lot of rumors, and and obviously I, I try to pull back and suggest that uh, you know multiple things can be happening simultaneously in a situation like this. It's so large. I mean, it's I mean we're going from the coast of Florida all the way through Georgia, up into North Carolina, up into East Tennessee. Of course, uh, there are going to be places where the relief efforts are going better than others. Uh, there are going to be stories that might be true that do not represent the widespread help that many people are getting. And so I, I'm trying to cut through some of that without uh, you know, diminishing anyone's individual story. Let me get from you, Jeremy, because you're not only on the ground every single day going through this as a survivor of it and as a helper, but you're also a representative. What has been your experience about the help coming in? Uh, what is happening on the positive side of things and anything that you want to focus on from a negative perspective? So, first of all, I, I, will, I will say this. I can't speak for what took place in North Carolina with FEMA or Georgia with FEMA, and I've heard some real horror stories. My son has been in North Carolina, and he saw some stuff from people posing to be FEMA or war FEMA that were pretty bad and egregious. But I'll say this. In my state, under Patrick Sheehan's leadership, we've not had an issue with FEMA. Anybody who's told us stories, we've never been able to quantify those stories and find out that they they were actually true. So I'll say from the THP, from TEMA to the THP to the TWRA, I could not be more proud of Tennessee and more proud of those those groups of people. They have they have and our National Guard. 
there's a story going to come out. Humbug, I'm hopefully going to do a, uh, a Facebook Live with these guys. They were on their way to that hospital up in Unicoi, some of our, our, our National Guardsmen, and their, their truck got washed away. They kicked out the window of their truck, got on a pile, a debris pile, floated to shore, and still aided in those people coming off the roof. Wow. Those are the stories that I want people to know about that have happened in Tennessee. And I, I don't, I don't want to diminish somebody's story in North Carolina or Georgia because I didn't, I wasn't there, I didn't see it. Right. But as far as my state is concerned, the TWRA, the THP, and TEMA, and our National Guard are freaking heroes, and they need to be loved and praised for the job that they've done here. Jeremy, what is needed in Cock County? What's needed in Hamlin and Jefferson and the surrounding communities uh, that you know your fellow representatives are working so hard to clean up? What What do you need most from those of us in Middle Tennessee? So I, I'm so glad you asked that. We have had this massive outpouring of love. Um, people have shipped us stuff from all over the world that are temporary and emergency needs helping us right now. This is a long haul. This is a marathon to get us back in East Tennessee, these eight counties, back to where they're operating at par. And I, I just hope that Tennessee will remember that. I hope that when it comes time to rebuild, that we'll see people show up and say, you know what, I know how to put sheetrock up. You know what, I know how to do plumbing. I know how to do all that. And just be willing to come up and still help. We're still kind of re we can't, we've just now got all the roads open. It was so bad that we, all of my county highway departments, their road, their road stuff got destroyed because they're, they're too close to the river. Thankfully, Glenn Jacobs, I called him and asked him to come down to our Cock County Highway Department. When he saw that all of our stuff got destroyed, he called his chief engineer and the next day on Saturday, they came in with bulldozers and track hoes, back hoes and skid steers and started helping us get it, getting roads undone. We've just now got all of our roads open yesterday so we can get everywhere but we've got to do the rebuild process so i hope tennesseean will stay with us and support us in this effort of rebuilding you mentioned the roads um we're we're told that the interstate but uh, 40 um going out of tennessee and after the 81 split uh the i mean there, there's just no real anticipated time for that to get back have you spoken to anyone about that and uh, have you heard anything about it i know that's a little I, I, I i'm thinking if i'm looking at a map correctly that might be a little bit south of you but no that i-40 comes right through my district oh as there soon you as go you come into Cock tennessee County. okay from north yeah as soon as you come into tennessee from north carolina you get into the 11th house district so interesting enough i've been the squeakiest wheel about i-40 that you can imagine today we have the governor will be here in a few minutes Senator Blackburn will be here. Senator Haggerty will be here. Commissioner Butch Ely will be here. And the minister of the, of the National Minister of Highways, just underneath Pete Buttigieg, is, is actually coming here to Cock County. I'm meeting them at 245. We're going out to the area where I-40 has been destroyed. I have been told by Butch Ely that the westbound lane is going to be opened all the way to North Carolina. They will turn it into a two-lane highway. The westbound lane is still salvageable, and they can work it. So people can get in and out to the first part of North Carolina all the way back into us. Wow. That doesn't help us much in North Carolina because it got washed out even worse right across at mile marker 6. It got washed out even worse there. But we've got them all coming today, and, and, and my goal is to remind them that this is the main artery for everybody coming from the southeastern hemisphere, coming through uh, Tennessee, this is a main artery. About 40,000 people a day pass through my district on I-40. This is a, this is a massive uh, commerce, if you will, that comes through here and, and a tax revenue that happens not just for Cock County, but for all of the state of Tennessee. So we're putting great efforts on it. Within two weeks, it'll be open two lane into North Carolina. And they're telling me that they're hoping they can do the same thing in North Carolina within about a year, have it two lane, and then within two years, have it back to a four lane. Representative Jeremy Faison is with us talking about the devastation wrought from Hurricane Helene and the resulting flooding in his district. Uh, Jeremy, I know you were working with our good friend Robbie Starbuck regarding Starlinks uh, and trying to, to get the communication uh, back up and running. How successful has that been, and are you in need of anything anymore in that regard? 
you know that that's a, a great story and i and i'll be eternally grateful to robbie we end up reaching out to each other and what can he do and i gave some ideas he 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 brought me a team of guys that i put my son who was at etsu and etsu shut down last week so we put them together because he's used to all these mountain roads he grew up here and they started delivering starlinks to people i had the privilege and time that i went to a couple of them and and <laughs> Man, when you see somebody and they're able to get on the Internet and they haven't talked to anybody in four days hardly, and the only way they can get is through radio because everything else is gone, it is amazing the joy that you see in their heart. And I'll just tell you a brief story. We went to a church that a bunch of people had hunkered down during the storm. It's just above the French Broad River. didn't get hit. A lot of people had to be rescued from there. We got out there Wednesday night with... um, Starlink, and when I pulled up, these little ladies that I've never met, they jumped up off the porch of that front front porch of that church and just came and bear hugged me, and they said, "We heard you were going to make it to where we could have internet," and they started crying. They were hugging on me, and they started weeping. I took my wife and my staff. We had a, a town hall yesterday. I took them out to see all the damage out there in Del Rio. When we got out there, that church parking lot was filled with 50, 60 cars all sitting out there on their cell phone, being able to connect to people. And that's a direct uh, direct effort from Elon Musk and Robbie Starbuck, getting that to me and our team. And uh, it brought a lifeline into the middle of chaos. It, it, it was a beautiful thing. Additionally, Starbuck, I want to holler him out. He tweeted things we needed. He asked me for something we needed. He would tweet it out, and the next thing you know, Amazon is showing up. Walmart is showing up, dropping stuff off. It was so much stuff that came to my local post office that they hired other postmen to come and work in the post office to sort it all for my church. It it, it was, I've never seen anything like it, Brian. It it was absolutely amazing. Jeremy, what else do you need is the question. I mean, what can we do? Obviously, I've encouraged people to give to charitable, uh, give charitable donations as they can to trusted sources. Or is there anything specific that we can do? You know, the only thing I would think of specific is if you, if people are listening to this and they are handy with a hammer, they know how to frame, they know how to sheetrock. Would you, would you just consider? coming over the next few weeks and helping out it it means so much to people when when you show up last night at that town hall the colonel of the thp came colonel perry and and my people were just so appreciative that he showed up so if you have a specialized skill and you think you could be of help reach out to my office there We'll, we'll put you in contact with some people that you could be that you could be a help to moving forward and 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 it, i just want to say thank you to everybody that's listened that has given and prayed and been a part of this we're thankful to you representative jeremy Faison, thank you so much jeremy we'll talk to you again very soon take care and anything yes, you need let us know okay blessings absolutely take care thank you jeremy